Hi everyone. I want to show you uh, today how I fixed a problem that I've had with my Raza for the better part of two years. It's taken me this long to uh, figure out what it all was and I will show you what I did to fix it. And uh, we'll start with uh, what I'm using. I have uh, a 62 megapixel camera with a photon cage and what the photon cage allows me to do is uh, to fix the tilt which is something that's very crucial with the Raza and the back focus. You don't have a lot of room for focus on a Raza with faster scopes period and this uh, allows me to nail the back focus and then adjust the tilt. This is connected to an Astro Hutech adapter. I have 54 millimeter threads here and I had to get a uh, fitting made at Precision Parts, which is, uh, I forget what the threads are on this, but it's, um, something that I needed to do to get my back focus just a little bit closer because I didn't want to have uh, the photon cage doing all of the, the heavy lifting for back focus so I, I had this little adapter made and then uh, I also got the filter drawer along with the adapter and this filter drawer uh, I'm using 52 millimeter filters and then on the inside of this, I just want to show you, you can see that I have a light right here. And you can see how shiny that is. <laughs> That's the prob one of the problems. So uh, what I will do is, uh, because I don't run with the optical window in my Raza, if you take, I'm going to take this little sleeve that I made out. And what this will do is show you, come on, baby. Hopefully you can see this. I'll zoom in a little bit. you can see how shiny these threads are. That's also an area of concern because the, the cone angle of fast scopes is so steep that it's going to hit these threads. And as you can see, these are very shiny and they bounce like light like there's no tomorrow. So what I made is a sleeve It has a little bit of a lip on this end and then it's flocked on the inside and it's a little bit shorter than the total depth that I need and that's okay because I want it to rest on this lip. I don't want to touch the glass, the corrector glass. So all I do is push this in and as you can see, the reflections are gone that were here. There's reflections on the inside, but that's mainly because of my light. So if I can just cover that up. There, you, you can see that I'm kind of covering the reflections that are on the inside of the glass, but that, that isn't what was causing my problems. It was these threads. And then on the inside of the adapter, I have flocked the back side and I made another sleeve that's flocked. And all I do is just slide that in and now I don't have any reflections on the inside 
And when I butt this up against here and put the ring on, it's not going to go anywhere. So this, those two changes removed every one, actually three changes, this sleeve, this sleeve, and then the flock on the back side. That removed all of my reflections that I was getting with my Raza on, on my data. Now, if you own a uh, APCS or an APSC, whatever the nomenclature is, you will probably be using the supplied Raza adapter. This is the 48 millimeter adapter. And then I have a 20 millimeter spacer with a Starzona filter slider to get the right back focus. And what you will see is as I turn this around, this thing is reflecting light like a banshee. <laughs> So what you're going to need to do is put the flocking paper on this and then I'll remove this from the spacer. And you will see that there's just a little bit of a, a lip right there that you should flock also because light will bounce on that. So if you flock this area and then the area that's on the inside here, you will solve your reflection problems with the Raza adapters. So what I will do now is uh, go back to my computer and I'll start showing you some data of what I'm talking about by, uh, or what I mean by Raza rings. I mean, once you see these things, you will never, ever not see them. <laughs> and it becomes a bigger headache uh, to try and get rid of them. And uh, uh, background abstraction does not remove them 100%. If you, if you start uh, stretching the data at all, they start to sneak back in. So I will do that next, and we'll see you in a moment. Thanks. All right, as you can see, I'm sitting in front of my computer. I have some data loaded. And what I want you to notice about this data before I do anything to it is that there is the beginnings of problems. And these problems are what I call the Raza ring. Now, this is a full frame sensor. This data was taken on a very smoky night. Uh, the target was dipping into uh, the city of light, uh, the city of Buffalo light dome, which is why I have the gradient from uh, left to right. And it is affecting what the Raza ring is looking like because the light dome is kind of skewing this side of the ring. But as I start to process this data, you will see what I'm talking about. I will do an, a histogram stretch and you can just start to see the beginnings of the ring. It's darker on this side, but lighter on this side. So uh, what I will do is do a quick crop. I'll do a quick background extraction. Not going to be too fancy here. We'll just generate, I'll remove this one, this one, this one, and this one. And compute the background. And once this is done, processing, you will see that right in through here, you can see that there is a ring of weird looking data. I'll apply this. And this weird looking data, if I overstretch it, sticks out like a sore thumb. 
Okay, these are what I call the Raza rings. And as I showed you uh, in the, the first part of this video, that uh, they are just reflections in that short little one to one and a half inch area uh, in the optical train. Now, again, because of my light dome, this is the side that we're seeing most of that light dome. It is skewing the Raza ring from a dark ring to a light ring. But you can see <laughs> it is there. And I have had these for the better part of two years. It didn't matter if I was using an APC-S sensor or a full frame sensor. It, it just, I've always had the rings. This data was taken about one week before I started really getting mad at the rings. Because once you see these rings in your data, you can never not see them. They're always there. They, they just get more annoying. And uh, I got annoyed enough to finally start working on figuring out why I had them. Because everything else I tried, uh, never it didn't work until I figured out that uh, it was light because it's just too symmetrical and um, what I will do now is back, go back to auto stretch now this is a good look and even with the smoke that's a good look in uh, M51 got all kinds of little faint fuzzies in here and I was able to clean this up enough uh, to actually uh, post it to, uh, I think I'll work on this again and post it on uh, my YouTube channel so that you guys and gals can see it. So I'm now going to load this image, right? Whoops. I think this is it. Yes, and I have this, my, this is a normal gradient for me, but what we're not seeing is even before I start working on the data, this is just, it just looks like normal data. There are no rings and I can prove that by just doing a histogram stretch and there is nothing. We can see that my dither lines are in there. So what I will do is a quick, crop to get rid of that stuff. I will go back to auto stretch. I will just do a quick background extraction. I'm not going to be too particular about stuff. That's good enough. We will compute this. I might have to add some points down here. We'll see what it looks like. That's good enough. We'll apply it. And you can see that this data does not have any hint at all of a ring, a Raza ring. If I stretch, overstretch it, it just looks like normal data. Now I'm getting some weirdness, mainly because of the smoke. Uh, it was just, it was thick enough that as it was moving through while I was imaging, uh, that's this stuff in here. But I'm not, uh, I'm not really that worried about it. If we zoom in, you can see my stars are real soft. That's mainly because of the smoke. Uh, basically changing the focus on me, but that this test was mainly to, to prove that my fixes worked. And just looking at this data, 
going to have to say they did. So you now, if you have the same problem that I have, regardless of the uh, camera adapter you're using, Celestron or uh, the Astro Hutech or the batter, uh, and I think the batter has a bigger problem than the Astro Hutech for some reason, I don't know why, but you now know how to fix it and uh, you have seen the results, the before and after results of my fixes. So I hope this helps you out and if you've been annoyed, as annoyed as I have been at these stupid rings in your data and always wondered what they were, you now know that they are internal reflections of light bouncing around in that little one to one and a half inch area on, in the optical train between the sensor and the corrector glass. <laughs> so, on that happy note, uh, if you have any questions, uh, please post them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. And we'll see you in the next video. Thanks. Oh, and, and before I forget, I'm going to start doing live sessions, live streams on my YouTube channel, whether it's solar streams or uh, deep sky. So keep an eye out for that. If you're a subscriber to my channel, you'll get notifications when I'm live. I would love to see people show up. If not, you can always view the, the live stream after the fact in the past live stream section. So on that happy note, we'll see you all on the flip side, clear skies, and take it easy.